As dawn broke on February 8, 2011, the resonant hum of a Pilatus PC-12's engine animated South Africa's Linseria International Airport. This sleek aircraft, fueled and prepped the day before, was set for the day's journey. On board were nine individuals, two pilots and a seven-person entourage that included a high-profile CEO. They were focused, discussing the pivotal meetings that lay ahead. Their day was meticulously planned. First to Newcastle, where negotiations and business meetings awaited. Afterward, they would soar through the scenic expanses of Queenstown for another significant round of discussions. By day's end, they were scheduled to descend gently upon the tranquil shores of Plettenberg Bay, their final destination for the day. Taking off punctually at 0603 Zulu time, they ascended to cruising altitude, guided by the skillful hands of their 32-year-old commander. A seasoned aviator with a total of 2,662 flying hours, she was intimately familiar with this specific Pilatus, identified by its tail number Zulu Sierra Golf Alpha Alpha. Beside her sat the first officer, a 30-year-old professional with 351 flying hours, carefully selected for this mission. Although it was their first flight together, the pair operated in seamless harmony. Both pilots hailed from Johannesburg, the origin point of this consequential journey. They were entrusted with a seasoned Pilatus PC-12, serial number 858, a veteran of the skies manufactured in 2007. As the sun arched across the sky, they touched down in Newcastle. Here, the delegation conducted their business swiftly, their minds already focused on the next leg of their journey to Queenstown. Under the steady command of the crew and their dependable aircraft, this phase of the flight unfurled smoothly and without incident. At 13.29 Zulu, after the Queenstown consultations concluded, the PC-12 once again cleaved the South African sky on an IF flight plan, steadfastly set on a course for Plettenberg Bay Aerodrome, with an estimated time of arrival firmly set for 14.30 Zulu. However, the weather reports cast a shadow of uncertainty on the final chapter of their journey. Satellite images depicted a canvas of low, ominous clouds, ensconcing the adjacent mountains, a stark harbinger of dense fog and potential drizzle that lay ahead. As the aircraft ascended from Queenstown, the pilots established radio communication with Cape Town Air Traffic Control at 1334 Zulu. Cape Town, good afternoon. Golf Alpha Alpha. Golf Alpha Alpha, Cape Town, good day, go ahead. Afternoon, sir, PC12 Airborne and out of Queenstown at 1329, passing flight level 100, and we've got flight level 180 on request. Golf Alpha Alpha. Golf Alpha Alpha, Squawk 1502. Report your airborne time at level on request. Squawk 1502 and our airborne time at 1329. Flight level on 180. On request, please. Golf Alpha Alpha. Golf Alpha Alpha, no reported traffic for the climb. Flight level 180. Routing Papa Yankee. Thanks, no reported climb for the traffic. Sorry, no reported traffic for the climb. Flight level 180. Routing Papa Yankee. Golf Alpha Alpha. Six minutes later, the crew of the Pilatus radioed the following request. Cape Town, Golf Alpha Alpha, can we request ride off track for weather? Golf Alpha Alpha, right off track is approved. Once clear, route direct to Papa Yankee. Report, setting course. Thanks, ride off track approved, once clear, report routing, Papa Yankee, Golf Alpha Alpha. Unbeknownst to the pilots of the Pilatus, a Cessna Citation had faced challenges earlier that day, at 12.10 Zulu time, while attempting to land at Plettenberg Bay Airport, due to adverse weather conditions. The Cessna Citation, registered as Zulu Sierra Papa Alpha Juliet, had also embarked from Lanseria Aerodrome earlier that morning. Its approach to Plettenberg Bay Airport was commenced from the northeast, flying the published cloudbreak procedure and guiding the aircraft over the NDB beacon, Papa Yankee, at the aerodrome. 
From there, the plane made a left outbound turn over the sea, and after covering some distance, turned left again inbound to align with the beacon. As they approached for landing, the crew found themselves veiled in low clouds and rain. This significantly diminished their forward visibility, prompting the pilot in command to make the decisive call, abort the landing and climb out to re-enter the pattern for a second attempt. For this second approach, they extended their outbound leg further over the sea before making a left turn to intercept the beacon once more. This time, they were met with success, executing an uneventful landing on runway 30. Approximately 22 minutes from their destination, the Pilatus crew reached out to Cape Town Air Traffic Control to request clearance for their descent. Golf Alpha Alpha, ready for descent. Golf Alpha Alpha, no report to traffic for the descent into Plessenberg Bay and standby. I'll give you the update of the Q&H at surface wind shortly. Thank you, no reported traffic for the descent into Plessenberg and standing by. Golf Alpha Alpha. Golf Alpha Alpha, the surface wind is light westerly to south westerly. Temperature 20. Dew point one nine one zero one six and the only. The closest weather is George, which at the moment has a southerly wind less than 10. Visibility 2,500 meters. Thank you very much. Golf Alpha Alpha. That transmission confirm it is Golf Alpha Alpha calling. Golf Alpha Alpha, I'm not reading you. I have no report of traffic in the Pittsburgh Bay area. Your score for the next leg. The broadcast 124.8 and confirm you are getting airborne again in just a short while from Plitt. Negative, sir. Golf Alpha Alpha, we're going to spend the night in Plitt and go to George tomorrow morning. Okay, double transmission. Next time, 111, standby, break, break. Golf Alpha Alpha, copy. You're only going to George tomorrow morning and broadcast your intentions 124.8. If you don't land in Plett and need to divert to George for any reason, if you'll just remain overhead of Plett and to the east until you make contact with George for an inbound routing. And I will be standing by your cancellation of search and rescue. Thank you very much. If we can't make it into Plate, we'll remain in the east of Plate until we've made contact with George and we'll cancel search and rescue on the ground. Thank you very much. Golf Alpha Alpha. Thank you. At 14.32, a passenger on board the Pilatus reached out to a contact waiting in Plettenberg Bay. The message was urgent. They were diverting to George, 47 nautical miles west and needed transportation arranged from George to Plettenberg Bay. And then, just a few seconds later, at 1433, the crew of the Pilatus made their last radio call. Cape Town Golf Alpha Alpha. The air traffic controller attempted several times to re-establish radio contact, but all efforts proved futile. Soon after, an uncertainty phase was declared, which was quickly escalated to a distress phase. Meanwhile at 1510, the individual who had been arranging transportation at the passenger's request tried to return the call, but was met with an immediate redirection to voicemail. At 1515, he called George Aerodrome's ATC to inquire about the aircraft's landing. They had no information and suggested he contact Cape Town ATC. Upon doing so, he was told the aircraft had landed at Plett, which he knew wasn't the case. At 1600 Zulu, the Aeronautical Rescue Coordination Center in Johannesburg initiated an official search for the missing aircraft, using its last known radar position. 
Poor weather, marked by dense fog, grounded the two South African Air Force aircraft on standby and delayed boat deployment in the Plettenberg Bay area. The next morning, as visibility improved, search vessels from the National Sea Rescue Institute found floating debris near the western side of the Robert Nature Reserve and foot patrols along the shoreline discovered additional lightweight wreckage in the following days. On the afternoon of Friday the 11th of February 2011, a somber discovery was made. The South African Navy, having joined the search at the request of the South African Civil Aviation Authority, located the main wreckage. In that moment it became heartbreakingly clear that there were no survivors. As the weight of this devastating tragedy settled, the South African Civil Aviation Authority initiated an extensive investigation, driven by a solemn determination to uncover the cause of this heartbreaking accident. After thousands of dedicated investigative hours and collaboration with relevant industry partners, a comprehensive 92-page accident report was ultimately released, detailing the painstaking efforts to understand this tragic event. The probable cause, as heartbreaking as it is, suggests that the aircraft crashed into the sea due to a possible in-flight upset associated with the loss of control during instrument meteorological conditions. Several contributing factors played a role. The crew deviated from standard cloudbreak procedures, opting to visually navigate despite poor weather conditions below the safe minimums. This choice, combined with apparent lapses in judgment and decision-making, led them to continue their approach in challenging instrument meteorological conditions without a timely diversion to an alternative aerodrome. The situation may have been further complicated by potential spatial disorientation of the pilot while attempting this diversion. Notably, this was the first time the two crew members had flown together, adding an additional layer of complexity to an already critical situation. The loss experienced in this accident is profound and irreplaceable, and it leaves behind a void in the hearts of families and friends. May the memory of those lost serve as a sobering reminder to all in the aviation community. Safety must always be the guiding principle, in every decision, on every flight. Thank you for watching my channel and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos.